Gullick. I love that we both establish, help establish best practices, but then we actually do advance to dialogue and network and talk about those best practices. So we are going to have some time to collaborate, um, but we are going to stick with the theme of reframing. And when we sat together as an advisory committee to talk about how we wanted to bring networking to you this year, we decided to totally shift the frame. And usually, at these meetings, we'll either have you sit as um, grade levels, or we'll have you sit as social issues um, that you're interested in learning about. And today, we've decided to go away from that, and we're having you sit somewhere in the process of service learning. So we want to help you collaborate with each other based on what are you experiencing as you go through the process of service learning. So that's a new frame for us that we're bringing to you today. And um, the, the process will be um, two 25-minute um, sections. And we're hoping that you'll be able to find a roundtable that addresses one of your concerns or something that you're interested in along the process of service learning. So the first in this corner being um, what builds administra administrative buy-in to service learning. Um, when I've introduced them all, we'll obviously give you a chance to attend the table that you're interested in. Um, the second table are how are you connecting service learning to STEM or common core standards? The third is what is a service learning coordinator to do? Kind of open-ended. <laughs> Number four is what sells service learning to your faculty? In the back corner is how do we grow youth voice? In front here is how can the role of parents be more supportive of service learning? At table seven, it's how can we transition from community service to service learning? And at table eight in this corner is how can we motivate meaningful senior projects? Um, we'll get together for 25 minutes and throughout the process we will we have um, a moderator at each table to help guide you through the process. So we're going to take a minute at the table to get to know who's at the table and what everybody brings to the table around this topic. We're going to give you a chance to share what your experience is so far with the topic that you're interested in and how you relate to it right now. Um, we're going to develop and delve into some deeper questions about the topic. Um, and explore those together through dialogue. And then at the end, we'll have you look back at what we've discussed and think about how has your framework or how has your thinking changed now that we've had a chance to talk about it together with your colleagues. Um, and after the, that round of, of talks for 25 minutes, you're welcome to stay at your same topic or you're welcome to change tables and go on to a new topic and go through the experience once again. Um, I just want to leave you with sort of a lens or a frame to think about how you can approach these conversations. Um, I was really inspired by an education blogger um, about me page, and it was very short and simple, and it said, um, I've been an administrator, an educator, and a student, but none of those roles have defined me. At heart, I am a learner. I continue to reflect on where to lead, whom to follow, how to teach, and what to learn. So I think that as you enter these conversations, um, just keep in mind that we all get to be learners, and that's a nice space to be in as educators. And um, also that we're all collaborators and can have a lot to learn from each other during this process. So without further ado, enjoy your dialogue.